Rutherford Issues with Brian Barrett on FM 101.9 and AM 1450 Murfreesboro, FM 100.5 Smyrna. Listen and watch at WGNSRadio.com. Rutherford Issues is powered by Middle Tennessee Electric. MTE has helped provide light, comfort, and connection to our community since 1936. As your trusted energy advisor, MTE is always here to help. Connect online at MTE.com or download the My MTE app. Time to talk about Murfreesboro City Schools today. We're going to spend most of our time here talking about the City Schools Foundation. Lisa Trail joins us here this morning and um, just heard fall begins on Saturday. And I was thinking, really? And then here we are getting close to fall break even, Lisa. So school year is flying by. You know, it seems like the first two weeks goes a little bit slower just as we're getting um, all of our students where they need to be, and then, boom, we're on fall break. Yeah, it's crazy. Actually, I think there's a teacher work day on Friday, so you got a nice three-day weekend for the kiddos coming up, too. We do. It is a teacher work day. Listen to you. You already know our calendar <laughs> schedule. So the uh, kiddos get a four-day week this week, and I'm sure they're going to be busy with everything, but Friday is a day out for our students it's a work day for our uh, staff members and those are used to to do what uh, I mean, what happens on a teacher work day i, I know they kind of get together uh, in their groups and teaching groups and things yeah it's a professional development day so there's all kinds of uh, pd or professional development plan throughout the district some of them are at a school-based level and some of them are district level so it just depends on if you're a special area teacher, like in music or art, you may be doing one thing, but second grade teachers at a particular school may be doing something else. But it's very much planned. Uh, it is all about being prepared for the next uh, six to nine weeks. Yeah. So we try to give those teachers time to do that and to learn. We have professional development going on throughout the school year. Our instruction team, they are so great about making sure that our professional development really enhances the uh, student's work day, their student's school day, so that it's very much intentional and on point. It hasn't been that long ago that those used to be those half days, and now they're, they're full days and not as many. So uh, I, I think that works out for parents a lot better. And I would think for, you know, that uh, professional development that you can just, that could be your focus that day, not, you know, getting prepared for a half day with students and then switching right. the brain you know <laughs> right exactly so uh, it works out really well and allows our principals to do a lot of in, uh, intentional um, planning for our our um, staff members and regardless of whether you're a teacher or if you're an EA there is something going on for you that day well Lisa we're going to spend uh, our time here talking about the foundation today and um, maybe first of all before we dive into some events and particulars about that kind of give us a, a refresher on what it is that the City Schools Foundation does. Oh, think about the foundation as being the giant PTO for Murfreesboro City Schools. Sometimes that's easier for folks to kind of uh, grasp but the City Schools Foundation serves all of Murfreesboro City Schools. They uh, do two main fundraisers and two main fund distributors. Um, we uh, fund teacher grants, and that actually will be happening this Friday. We'll be announcing the winners as we have that professional development day. Several of the teachers will also be receiving grants, uh, grant dollars for the grants that they wrote. We had over 150 grants submitted this year, and we are actually funding about 50 of those at, to the tune of $72,000. Wow. So just great uh, grants this year. We It always stresses our um, foundation board when they can't fund them all, but we've you know, there's just so many great ideas and needs throughout the district that I think funding $72,000 is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, I would love to announce them, but we haven't announced them yet. So I'll send, make sure that you have all the information on Friday about who actually won. Okay. Um, but we did receive grants from across the district, uh, from every school, and um, we're looking forward to giving that money out. Um, again, it is just a great opportunity for Murfreesboro City School teachers and staff to look at the needs or some of the wants 
in their classroom and to write an easy grant for it to say this is why and this is how it's going to benefit the students. And by doing it this early, the foundation um, really works really hard. They read those grants. Everything is anonymous. And this year we even turned it around quicker so that the money is going to be in the teacher's hands by Friday, and then they'll start purchasing. So it would be the students in their classroom this year that will benefit from those grants. So just kind of a, a an idea, this could be for technology in the classroom. It could be to um, bring an element that helps the teachers in a whole grade level at a school with STEM. Uh, I mean, there are just numerous uh, I guess, applications for what the, the, the those dollars are used for with teachers? Yeah, a lot of STEM uh, requests go out. And when I say STEM, it can be a wide variety of things. Um, a lot of the robotics type programs that uh, they are enhancing the, the STEM classroom with. Um, we always have a couple that have something to do with our feathered friends, whether they, whether it is raising uh, baby chickens or whether it's owl pellets or all kinds of things like that, bird watching, uh, only because it's part of the standards on one of the grade levels. So we will have those that we see every uh, year. And most of the grants are for repeat years, so they may get it this year, but it's something they can use for years to come. Uh, we see a lot of music uh, grants and, as well as physical education. So it doesn't have to be just that traditional classroom teacher. It is our special area teachers as well. And they are just trying to build on what they're teaching. So um, I'm really, I'm looking at them going, oh, I'd love to tell you about, about yeah. all of them. <laughs> um, but we do have a lot of science this time. We also have some sensory, so that social emotional support um, that are being funded. Um, several f uh, physical activity grants are being funded, just so they're asking um, for a few more things to teach our children and that PE. Um, so it's just, it can be anything. It can be math, it can be, it can be math, it can be English, it can be um, just whatever, whatever they feel will enhance the teaching in the classroom. That's what they can write the uh, grant for. And then our board actually reads them. They're all anonymous. So until after everything is read and scored and voted on, they do not know who they funded. They don't know which school they're coming from or what teacher level. Um, this year, a lot of multi-grade levels got together, so it's really school-based uh, grants versus just one classroom grant, which is kind of a, a new idea um, that we've done it before, but this year it seemed like there was a lot more of them that was really like it's going to go across, across the school. This is going to benefit every child in the school. And then sometimes it's just grade level, so it's, you know, only the fifth grade team is going to benefit by this because this is something we're teaching in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. so, it, it's really, it's really fascinating, um, and it's it's really humbling when you see what they're asking for. This year, I think the lowest grant that we are funding, uh, as far as dollar amount, is one hundred and twenty-five dollars, and the highest one is right at six thousand dollars. And so, that probably average grant is going to be around two thousand this year. So it really does make a difference, a significant difference in that classroom. Sure. And, you know, it's been interesting to watch over the years. Um, maybe it was for technology in the classroom to convert, you know, to, to bring uh, – I'm thinking overhead projectors, but that's old days, you know, but, you know. <laughs> yes, but honestly, whenever I first started, that was one of the things that was being asked for. And then we went to the smart board. Yeah. And I think the foundation kind of allows uh, some of those innovative ideas to happen and then uh, gives them a couple of years to go, oh, wait, this shouldn't just be an innovative idea. This should be the idea we are focused on. So uh, you will see some of the things that we funded early on actually as a day-to-day, -day, um, it's just typically in the classroom now. So that's really nice to have those extra dollars to say, okay, let's try this. And when it works, then let's start funding it. Well, I've noticed that, you know, the, the smart board was what I was trying to think of and I, and yeah. I couldn't, but you know, you build the, the newer schools and, you know, the classrooms have the smart boards in them because that's kind of become not, I guess, a norm to have in the classroom because it just right. enhances so much uh, the, the learning experience. Right. It definitely has become the standard for a classroom. 
So um, $72,000 in grants, and that is only made possible from some of the fundraising efforts that you do the previous year. And so we're going to talk about um, some fundraising efforts for this coming year, and that will help fund next school year's yes. grants, right? That is correct. We work off of what we raised last year for this year, and it just keeps going that cycle. Well, uh, talk to us about what's coming up because I, I, I think you all are pretty um, – um, what's what's the right word for it uh, – innovative when you come up with some ideas for fundraising i mean we've we've had trivia nights before and um all kinds of things so what's coming up here that we can uh, talk about well the foundation itself has two fundraisers we have excellence in education that happens every spring and that's our largest fundraiser and then in the fall we did a run for years and years and years and last year we turned over to be a tennis tournament so it's a double so we're doing that again it's a doubles tennis tournament um, on November 8th and 9th, it will be at Adams Tennis Complex. Um, we are so fortunate that Adams and the Parks and Rec have partnered with us again this year. And um, then we're following it on Sunday with a small pickleball tournament. So we're getting every one of those strings out. So uh, tennis on Friday and Saturday, pickleball on Sunday. And the registrations for that will open up this week. It is $60 per team. So $30 per person, $60 per team. Um, it is this year for men. We have a women, a men's, and we're going to have a high school division this year. Last year, we did not have high school, and we had so many people asking us for it that we said, okay, well, let's try that. So all the information is coming out. Uh, we're, we've got it set. It will be at Adams Tennis Complex, and we're so excited. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And, and see, th there you go finding something that uh, is is popular I, I drive by Irma Siegel all the time and there mm -hmm. are people out enjoying the courts with pickleball <laughs> you know so yes. it, it's Actually, that's where we're going to do our pickleball tournament is going to be at Irma Siegel it will be inside and outside it will be a small tournament just because of the number of courts and because we've not done it before so we want to make sure we do it correctly this year um, so the tennis will be the larger portion of it, and then we'll follow that Sunday with pickleball. And we are so excited. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. The tennis part is a lot of fun because uh, although they're very competitive out there on the courts, everything off the courts is, is um, just very friendly, and we are, we're definitely in it for the kids and looking forward to that. We're actually looking for sponsors now, so if uh, there are anyone, anyone out there that would like to sponsor you can call us here at the central office, or you can call Catherine Lehman. She is our chair for the tennis tournament, and Eric Newell is our chair for the City Schools Foundation this year. So any of us will be happy to accept those sponsorship dollars. Now, is the best place to find information about that on your Facebook page? Uh, on the Facebook page, and then um, uh, by this afternoon, you'll be able to find it on our website as well. Okay. Well, I'll put links to both uh, on the podcast section so Absolutely. folks will know where to uh, to find that. Lisa Trail with us from Murfreesboro City Schools. And uh, before our time gets away, Lisa, we've got a few minutes here to uh, talk about Parent University. Oh, my goodness. This may be two of my favorite subjects this year. The foundation is always one of my favorites. Uh, Parent University is, um, we launched it this year. It's just allowing, our goal is to help empower uh, our parents to be their child's first teacher because we know that's who the first teacher is. I mean, you're, the parents are the ones doing um, that work on the weekends and nighttime and everything. And so Parent, Parent University is allowing parents to kind of come in and get a helpful hint and a hand, handout. Uh, about what we're teaching in the classroom. So the one coming up this Thursday is called Let's Plant an Early Foundation. It's Thursday, September 19th. You do have to pre-register for these, but this is for parents with children in grades K through two, so K through second grade, and it's a literacy workshop. And we realize that a kindergartner and through second grade is going to learn a little different than that third through sixth grade. So if you have a child kindergarten to second grade, going to be a hands-on workshop. Uh, our reading coordinator, Kathy Dahlry, is um, really going to be teaching it. And 
So you're going to go away understanding what's being taught in the classroom for your child. It's going to be so helpful for parents just to hear those same words. So when your child comes home and says, my teacher said this, you're actually going to know what they're talking about. Um, Kathy's going to be modeling effective reading and phonics strategies. Uh, We have lots of great materials to provide parents, and it should just be a really easy workshop to attend and just to gain a lot of knowledge from. Now, you had your first one last week. Is that right? We did. Yeah, we had our, well, we actually our second one. Our first one was kindergarten okay. uh, before we began school. Um, and we had, at that point, it was just about what to expect in kindergarten. We had over 200 uh, parents attend that, so we were very excited. Last week, we did a smart start with Redstone uh, just to talk uh, with parents and give them an overview of what financial uh, needs are going to be coming up, <laughs> you know, those kids get to college before you ever know about it or that car and all that kind of stuff. So it was with one of our uh, community partners and a little different than what this week is going to be because this week is really getting into this classroom strategy. Well, I'll be sure to uh, put links to uh, all of the upcoming classes on uh, the website as well. And Lisa, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you as always, for allowing us to tell our story. Absolutely. Lisa Trail with Murfreesboro City Schools joining us on this edition of Rutherford Issues.